My name is Yolanda Shea, and I'm an atmospheric science researcher at NASA Langley Research Center in Virginia. When I got the opportunity to come back um, to Virginia to work at NASA Langley, it was kind of like coming back home. I spent about half of my childhood up in Massachusetts, and then that's where I was born. And then about the second half of my childhood down here in Virginia, in central Virginia, closer to Richmond. Um, and when we moved down here, I thought that the thunderstorms down here were a little bigger and scarier than the ones in Massachusetts, or maybe just in my nine and 10 year old brain, they were. So what I would do to make myself feel a little better was I would turn on the Weather Channel and I would watch the meteorologists talk about um, the weather in my area and then of course other areas all over the United States. And watching the Weather Channel for so much of each summer kind of caught my interest um, in terms of how they put together their forecast. To me, it seemed like a big puzzle. I loved seeing all their maps and satellite data, and I just thought it was really cool. So um, I decided, uh, since that held my interest all through middle school and high school, that um, I might want to be a meteorologist. And I decided to go to college um, to study more about Earth's atmosphere. I did research assignments with um, professors in the summer. I took an internship at an engineering company one summer after I think my sophomore or junior year. Um, and at least doing research with my professors, I learned, oh, I like having to sort of dig around and, and figure out, you know, feel your way in the dark, you know, to answer questions about whatever the professor was doing research on. Um, it was sort of my first insight into what research was. So I got there and they said, okay, we're working on some, some things for a weather satellite. Um, you're gonna be working on ocean currents, which I thought was confusing because I had learned about remote sensing. But um, I don't think I had fully grasped all of the power of remote sensing and really all of what you can learn about the Earth's climate system um, with remote sensing. So remote sensing is a way to learn about something without touching it. You know, we all have remote sensing instruments. We have our eyes, we have our ears, and you know, with our eyes, you know, we can use reflected light to, you know, learn about how bright something is, or what color something is, or even a little bit about its texture sometimes. We can design instruments that can uh, be sensitive to reflected light, that can be sensitive to thermal heat. Um, so anything that has a temperature is emitting information at you. And we can take the information from those measurements and then kind of ask the measurements different questions and then say, okay, well, this is what we've learned about the objects that we were um, directing our, our measurements to. So that's what our weather satellites do. That's what lots of NASA satellites also do. And that's what this weather satellite was doing with ocean currents. It was using thermal information, so just the temperature of the ocean surface and how that temperature map kind of moved in time to kind of put together a story of how the oceans were actually moving. I, I thought that was really magical and I wanted to learn more about it. So um, I kept that in mind in college, you know, I learned two things. I liked research, I thought it was interesting, and I thought remote sensing was really cool. I was actually working um, as a grad student with my professor on a grant that was um, funded as a part of the Clario project. We were using some of that reflected sunlight data from satellites to understand, you know, how can we use the information in this data to figure out how our climate is changing over several decades. He and I had been working back and forth. I was trying to make sure I understood how this model worked and getting this little model to work on the computer that I was working on. And I, um, I had gotten to a point where it felt like a brick wall and I didn't know what to do next. So, you know, I walked into my professor's office and I said, okay, so I've done this and I've done this and I've seen this and, and now I, I don't know what to do next. And, and he looked at me and said, I don't know either. And that's all he said. And I, that's when it clicked for me. Oh, I need to figure out what to do next. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, I get how this works now. You're not just telling me what to do. This is, this is research, this is what this is. I have to go back and, and think and try things and, and try to come up with an answer to this question. So that was sort of the, you know, the first time the light bulb turned on in terms of what research was and what it wasn't. Um, so that difference between professors always having the answer and them not having the answer either and that's why they're doing the work. So um, so that was kind of a that was kind of a fun moment for me. It's it's fun to think back to that moment of, oh you don't know either. 
No one knows. That's why we're doing this. I get it. Okay, okay, I'm here now. <laughs> My advisor was really good about advocating for his students and en encouraging us to kind of grow and exposing us to other people and, and other experiences. So as I became a more experienced grad student, he would just send me to meetings, like the Clario meetings that are happen twice a year and say, I'm just gonna talk about your work anyway, so why don't you talk about it? Of course, I was terrified to do this <laughs> because I felt like I was just a grad student. But that was a really good experience for me because it helped me to become a better communicator. It helped me to make sure I knew what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it, what the story was and the presentations I was giving about the work I had done. This sort of segues into how I got to NASA. You know, doing all this fun work as a grad student, getting to know people at other universities and at NASA Langley. And they were kind enough to let me know when there were job opportunities at NASA Langley that uh, may be a good fit for me. Then I became a Clario research scientist. So Clario is a climate observation mission, and there are specific things that you need for a climate observation mission versus kind of a weather mission. There are differences in the level of accuracy between what you would need for a weather forecast. You know, it's okay if you're a couple degrees off, you may still be in the low 70s or the mid 70s that was forecasted. But in terms of climate, you know, a couple degrees can mean quite a lot has happened and quite a lot has changed. Um, so that's one of the things that the Clario mission would address. And a question that is kind of a big question still in our studies of climate change is what is the role of clouds going to be? They remain to be a big question mark. Um, there are lots of different types of clouds. Some of them can help to cool the climate. Some of them can help to warm the climate. And we're likely going to have some mixture of both of those things happening as climate changes happen. But we don't know how big that impact is going to be. So with um, my work on Clario, what I'm doing is asking the question of how accurate do our instruments need to be so that we're able to detect the changes in cloud properties, whether it's their amount or their opacity or their height. Um, how accurate do our instruments need to be so that we're able to discern those changes and say confidently that we know those are the changes that we're seeing and that we'll be able to work with our other colleagues who are developing the programs that calculate cloud variables like their amount and their opacity from those measurements and say, okay, well, we, we actually have the accuracy that we need to see changes of clouds over a few decades. I played the violin for about five years, from three to eight, and then, um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do by practicing, so my parents said, okay, well, then we're not going to keep paying for lessons. So, um, you know, I stopped playing for a couple years and in that time we had moved from Massachusetts to Virginia and I, you know, started middle school. And when I started middle school, I had already missed the violin already. And um, I was happy to see that my middle school had an orchestra class that I could take. Um, so in that way, I was able to pick up the violin again. And all throughout middle school, all throughout high school, I played in, um, in the school orchestras and in high school I took lessons. I think playing the violin and um, realizing that the more you practice, the better you get. And then the more you practice, the better you get and the easier it is to hold on to the difficult things that you've learned. I think that was a good just life lesson to learn about um, the strength of practicing and the strength of sticking with something, of perseverance. And I imagine that's fed back into um, the work that I've done as well. I think whether you're interested in in clouds, like I am, or if you're interested in um, biology or whatever it is, ask the people around you questions. You know, dig into what you're interested in. Figure out what it is about it that interests you. That's something I, I talked about, how I had to do that in college because I realized, oh, okay, I don't want to be a weather forecaster, then what am I going to do? To answer that question, you know, I, I talked to my professors and, you know, I tried new things and kind of discovered, oh, I like this and I like that. Um, so really, don't be afraid to explore what you're interested in. Um, that can be really important. And certainly don't be afraid to reach out to professionals in your local area who may be doing something similar to what you're interested in. Um, even if it's a simple phone conversation where you take 15 minutes and you ask them, what do you do? Do you like what you do? What is involved in the work that you do? Um, and that may just give you a better picture of if you're interested in doing that in the future as well.